Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Metal Work Monday. My name is Gary and on this week's video we are going to be taking this 69 Camaro cold air intake panel and relocating the hole uh, for the air filter from the center of the panel to the outer edge. And this project is for Tom Noble who's also on YouTube and I'm going to put a link to a video where he kind of goes through what the problem is fitting this panel. Uh, because he's got a non-standard engine uh, that he's doing the restoration with. I think it's an LT1 or it's a later model engine. I don't think it's an LS motor, but go check it out. You'll see what I'm talking about. Um, and just to let everybody know, um, most of you know I'm in the process of starting a new business and leaving my full-time IT job to do this kind of stuff on a permanent basis. And um, I've done projects like this in the past for people on YouTube uh, just to help out, you know, no charge or anything. And, but I'll no longer be able to do that. And, um, but I would like to offer this as a service to anybody out there who needs uh, certain things made and maybe you don't have the exact right equipment to do it. I know most guys can, can probably you know, do some of this kind of stuff, some of you can't. Um, but my standard shop rate to, or discounted shop rate I should say, to YouTube members is gonna be $50 an hour. Um, and just to give you an idea of what I charge Tom, hopefully he doesn't mind me mentioning this, is for one hour's worth of work to, to duplicate this panel and move the whole location uh, for him and uh, plus the cost of the material and the return shipping so i think it's very reasonable and just my way of trying to help you guys with your projects and it'll help me uh you know replace my income with my full-time job and um supplement the other things that i'm trying to do here so uh without further shameless self-promotion we'll go ahead and get started showing you the process that we went through to create this panel All right, so we got our rough overall dimension cut out here um, and just wanted to go over a couple things real quick. Uh, this is, you can see that's 080 there, probably may or may not be showing up. This is, I believe, a little bit thinner than, than that. Um, not exactly sure what it is because, you know, that comes up to 084 um, and it's got powder coat on both sides of it. And I would think that, you know, the, the material thickness on powder coat is more than six thousandths. So, uh, but I think it's close enough for the, for the project here. Um, the one thing I wanted to just mention or point out about grabbing a sheet of aluminum, just any sheet for a project like this is that, uh, as most of you know, there's a lot of different grades of aluminum and uh, some are better at some things than others. Like, you know, some grades are really good to TIG weld or weld in general, and some are not. 
Um, also, some are really good for bending and some are not. Some grades of aluminum, if you try to bend them, uh, will crack really easily. And they may not crack initially, but over time with stress, uh, they, they could crack for sure down the road. This is a, a drop, a 50-52 drop. It's a decent grade for bending and um, got it at Metal Supermarkets in the drop bin. Uh, for Tom, for 15 bucks for the whole uh, sheet. And uh, they, they told me that you know, that was actually less expensive than if I just gave them an order to cut a specific piece and they, they cut out this dimension here. So uh, anyway, so we're gonna, what we're gonna do is, you can see on this panel that I used uh, uh, the calipers and measured each of these sections uh, in, um, in decimal form, you know, to get a more, hopefully more accurate measurement. So I'm gonna lay out these same lines and we're gonna go ahead and start uh, laying out our bends and cuts and things like that. See, the first thing we did was we got this tab. And if you'll notice, it's got a step in it there that's 32 thousandths of an inch. Um, so this should fit up on there along with the step. You see that's at the edge when you see the room there for the step to be bent. All right. So we'll keep doing the rest of it. Um, may or may not take you along for every single step of laying out and cutting this and bending it, but uh, we'll take you along the way and show you what we're doing <clears throat> all right so I don't know if you can see but the, we got a line scribed in here and that line scribed there represents this line okay so we're gonna start using that this as a reference to transfer our hole location we're gonna drill our hole now uh, while this plan, panel is still in a flat configuration just to make it easier to clamp up and uh, get set so we're going to find the top of where the hole goes because it's going to be easy to find this edge because he says it needs to move over a sixteenth of an inch to get it off of this bend radius. And then we just need to find out how far down from the top. All right. So, whoops, a little too far. And you probably can't see that when you raise my arm up. So it's looking like about um, about four and five sixteenths uh, so four inches five sixteen down and then uh, we'll just be so we'll get our reference here in fact we can go ahead and put a line there and then we'll use this line and get our hole saw lined up in there and get the hole drilled. And that's, this is a four inch uh, opening here. Let me just double check that. Yep, four inches. All right, we'll get it set up in the uh, mag drill press and go from there. All right, just gonna give you a little close up here of what we've done. You can see the uh, this edge of the hole saw is uh, just inside our scribe line. You know, Tom drew a circle around the outside of the pipe so which means the line is should represent the edge of the hole so i cheated this one a little bit because he said move it over a 16th and we want to move it away from that bend line and then this one i've got right on it so that should put the hole location right where he needs it so i removed the center drill the pilot drill out of that so that we could get this uh down uh and you know all the way down and and get a precise uh setup now I'm going to clamp this and then we'll raise this back up and put the center drill in it because that'll help us keep a, a good straight pilot and, uh, and we'll go from there. All right.
All right, as you saw, we did a little tweaking there uh, to just check things out and do a little massaging to get the final uh, look we were looking for there. So just doing a little test fit, which we'll do it this way, just to kind of get a little quick look, you know, of how things are fitting up. And that's not going to be able to sit in there perfectly because of the way the bends are. And see how this bend and this bend, they look like they're further out. But if you turn this around, if I can get this up where you can see it, and line up those bend marks. Now we got it on the opposite side, but we're just looking to generally see. You can see those are pretty well in the same spot. So just doing some little bit of checking along the way to make sure we're still, you know, on the right path here and uh, finish up our final bends out on this edge. As you can see, we got our line scribed on that. Don't know if it's showing up in the light, but we're gonna get that uh, set up in the brake and bend that one now. Y'all finished up here. Uh, just a quick note on the mounting hole locations. I left those undrilled on your panel so that you can mark and drill those in the right location and uh, get it fitted up how you want it. And uh, obviously, I just hit it with some Scotch Brite and cleaned it up. And then you'll put your coating, your finish, uh, powder coat, whatever you're going to do with it. So, uh, hope it fits well. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we will see you next week on Metalwork Monday.